Power Cycle Campers, how are you doing today? Today is the third installment of a series of videos I'm doing on how to outfit a seven day motorcycle camping trip. And what I have today is the lowest denominator, the minimal amount of things you should bring for comfort while camping. And this includes a tent, sleeping pad, ground sheet or tarp, a sleeping bag, a flashlight or two, and a knife. And these things can get you by. This is all you need. I'm not going to go too far into uh, why I think this is the lowest denominator, but the reality being everything else on the road you can get. And look at my second video and we talk about that. But this is what I purchased. This is, I'm kind of a gear junkie and, and I, uh, but I'm not a big spender, let's put it that way. And uh, what I bought here was through a lot of research. There's other options out there for you, but I'll tell you the reasons I bought what I have and uh, we'll go from there. Number one here, actually number two, bring a little bit of this. You can leave the porta potty at home, but bring a little bit of that. Um, so, what do we got? We got a tent. Now, the philosophy behind my tent purchase is if I was to buy a new tent, I would buy a two man tent. I would buy a two-man tent that's approximately 18 inches long because it needs to go in my saddlebag. I would buy a two-man tent, not a one-man tent, because I need to put my gear inside the tent, like my helmet and my coat and clothing or toiletries, whatever else you want to put in there. And uh, a two-man tent is in reality not a two-man tent. It's really a one-man tent. You have to be awful friendly to... Uh, to want to have two men in a two-man tent. I mean, if you've, got a, if you've got a partner that's going along and you want to cut back on stuff, you can get that two-man tent and snuggle up all you want, but I don't recommend it. In fact, if I was to buy a new tent, which I'm not going to, I've had this tent for over 10 years. This is a Eureka Timberline 2. And this was actually a Timber Light 2, and they don't make that anymore, but I, I like the tent. It's about six pounds. It's a heavier tent as far as, let's say, backpacking standards, but it's very solid, it's very durable. The things I look at in a tent, I would want aluminum poles, not fiberglass. I would want a clip-on style tent. In other words, you're not running your poles through sleeves. That's, I've had those. Don't go that way. Um, I would go three season probably, but if you're a winter camper or doing other things, go for the four season. They're expensive though. This tent I purchased at the time for under a hundred bucks. Right now it sells for about 170, something similar in the Eureka Timberline. I probably wouldn't buy another Eureka, not because I don't like them. I just would buy something different just to try, just for different. And one of the tents I've, I've discovered, and I'll put a link to it, it's a Kelty Salida. And they make a two-man version and a four-man version. Take a look at those. I might even consider the four-man version. It's slightly bigger than the two-man. It weighs about two pounds more. Uh, you could fit two people in it. If you have a passenger or if you and your buddy are traveling together and you want to get by with one tent, cut back on some gear, that one probably would be big enough without you bothering each other from a sleep standpoint. So take a look at that. Take a look at that Salida, that Kelty Salida. It looks like a good tent. It's got great reviews. It's, a, it's awesome. Check out Amazon. I'll put a link. Um, beyond the tent, probably the next most important piece is the, the, 
sleeping bag, and, I, and this is the first kind of nice sleeping bag I've ever bought, and I did buy this uh, last winter when I was dreaming about motorcycling in the middle of the awful winter. And what this is is an Outdoor Vitals Summit. It's 30 degrees. It's a 30 degree Fahrenheit bag, meaning it's good down to 30 degrees. I would probably not be out on the bike under 40 degrees. So this will be fine. This is perfect for temperatures in the 40s to the, let's say 80. This is perfect. It's not for everyone. It's a mummy style bag. If you're a bigger guy, I would consider a square bag, something with a little more shoulder room. This is actually a long. So if, in my opinion, in the Outdoor Vitals line and many others, if you are, let's say I'm 5'11-ish, if you're like six feet tall, look at the longs. The long versions of the sleeping bags are a little wider and they're longer. They're, you're not gonna be poking your toes out the end of the sleeping bag. It's gonna offer you some more air room and comfort. And I generally sleep very restless and uh, I need the room. When it gets warmer, you can unzip the bag. And with these down bags, this is actually a down bag. And you can look at the internet for all the reasons to buy down. But the primary reason that I see with a down bag is they are way cushy comfortable and they pack down to nothing. This bag is what it packs into and this is a compression stack. Compression sack. And this sleeping bag will be about the size of three quarters of this sleeping bag. Maybe a foot long maybe eight inches wide, something like that. And I believe I can get all this gear into one of my bags. Shut down, locked in, maybe room enough for a six pack. So that frees me up with one whole bag. If you wanna be a real minimalist, you have a whole other bag that you can use for other gear that, you, that might complement the kind of trip that you want to do. Uh, I hesitate to put like electronics and camera gear in a Harley bag. The Harley, the Harley shakes, the Harley rocks and rolls down the road. Um, it's going to rattle. It's not good for electronics. So what I'm going to do is again, bring a backpack just for my electronics. So let's, let's go beyond the tent and the sleeping bag. Look at them though. Down sleeping bags, pack down real nicely. They're real comfortable small form factor. You can buy synthetics that are similar and, and uh, Outdoor Vitals is a relatively new company and I really like them. Um, they produce some synthetics that are very inexpensive. I, I got a great deal on this bag. I got it for a little over a hundred bucks. Now they're selling for 180. I bought it at the right time. They've done some improvements, but the reality of it, I'm real happy with this bag and I like the black. It matches the bike. So let's go. Let's go over to uh, interior tent. We've got our, I, I've looked at sleeping pads, many of them, and, and I, I decided on the climate because I'm not a big heavy guy. I don't need a lot, not a, a lot of loft. Let's put it that way. I don't need thickness. So my bones aren't hitting the ground. So I, I chose the climate for a couple reasons. I got a camel version that looks pretty cool. This is also a long, and uh, it gives you, a, gives you some more length from a sleeping standpoint so your feet aren't hanging off, perhaps getting cold touching the ground. And this is an insulated version. I would definitely look for where I live, an insulated version. It makes a really big difference. Look for the insulated version of whatever camp pad, sleeping pad that, that you choose. And you can spend a lot of money on these. I spent about 60 bucks on these. The really good ones can go up to 200. So I thought I was pretty conservative with this one. And I thought, well, we'll see how it goes. And uh, I think I, I've used it. It works great. I love it. Okay. Associated to the tent, you always want to use a ground sheet. And when you spend, even if it's a little over a hundred bucks for a tent, 
you don't want to trash it by pitching it over rocks or sticks or sharp objects, mud. So get yourself a ground sheet. You can use a simple piece of plastic or Tyvek, but I did invest in this UTAD. It's actually a tarp and it's, it's pretty large. It doesn't look like it would be, but I haven't even taken it out of the bag yet because when I do, I don't think I'll get it back in the bag. But this tarp will allow me to, let's say, set it up as a tarp. If, let's say, it was raining and I didn't want to set up camp in the rain, so I'll set up my cart or my tarp and sit, you know, have a few beers at the, on the picnic table and, and uh, stay out of the rain, things like that. So this is, I think, a must. Um, moving beyond that, what do you need? You need a flashlight so you could set up camp at night. You might run in late for whatever reason. Maybe you're having a good time. You showed up at the campsite late. How many times have you been real effective putting up a tent with one hand? So, and you don't want to hold the flashlight in your mouth. It doesn't work. So get yourself a headlamp. This one is a... Foxelli, I, I haven't even used it in real life, but it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's got different settings and, and uh, it's got a red light, if I remember right. And uh, that's for like stealthy light. It doesn't, doesn't shine real far. It doesn't take away your night vision, blah, blah, blah. Um, not a necessity, but this thing was something under 20 bucks, if I remember right. And I have a link to that also. Actually, my links will be one link going to all the gear that I have or all the gear I might recommend. Like if I was going to buy a tent, I'm going to put up that Salida because if I ruin my tent some way, shape, or form, I'm going to buy that Salida and I'll probably buy the format because it's just slightly bigger. It'll still fit in my bag. Um, knife buys. I've had this Swiss Army knife probably over 20 years. This is what they called the camper at the time, but what, they, what this does have, it's got a bigger knife and a smaller knife. And the bigger knife, you can, it's good enough to cut up whatever you want for like a meal. If you want to make a meal, you can cut up whatever you want. It's got a can opener. It's got a bottle opener. It's got a little screwdriver and it has a nice serrated blade for cutting wood and that works great. Actually, you can, you can cut a two, three inch piece of wood with this if you want to cut up some kindling. It's an awesome knife. They're still available. It's small. That's all you really need. You don't need a big knife. This is all you need. So I guess my point being here is that beyond this, you don't really need that much unless you want to do some cooking unless you want to make some coffee. But beyond that, you don't need it. If you want to get up in the morning, pack away your stuff, go head out to breakfast, after that, hit the road, that's not a bad way to go. You've got that other bag all freed up. You can use it. It'll, my bag on the Harley holds, one bag holds 24 cans of beer, a case of beer. It's awesome. So. That's a consideration. If beer is important to you, it is to me. Then, then uh, you'll you'll want to uh, decide on what again was really important. How do you want to take on the gear for whatever you want to do on this trip? Because the trips uh, trips are different for everyone. It might be you want to go out and take some pictures. It might be uh, that you want to go visit some sites or historical things. It might be that you even go fishing. And uh, it, it, it's all personal. And I'm kind of a gear junkie, so I go on the, I bring more stuff than I want. And take a look at this video. I mean, this is everything I have that I might take. And I put it all into my two bags. And I'm not going to bring all that gear. So I'm still paring myself down to what I really want to take. But from a, from a basic standpoint, you need a sleeping bag. A tent, a ground cloth, 
a flashlight or two, I say two, one in the tent and one out, and you need a sleeping pad. And then, that's it. And a little bit of toilet paper maybe. So I'll put some links down below again. You can head over there and take a look at what I've picked out. And I've done quite a bit of research looking around. I'm, like I say, I just love looking at gear. I'm obsessive with it. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this. I, I, I'm always trying to improve my choices. Some choices I've, I've made, I think, are still 100%. There isn't anything I purchased that I really was kind of down on. So anything on that list, my gear list, it goes to Amazon. And it's like a, a listing of everything that I have or want. And there's only a few things there that I don't have. And the tent being one of them. So that's it. This is it. This is all you might want to uh, view for now. But uh, I'm going to go over some other things. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm trying to keep these short so you all don't get bored. But uh, have a good one.